Chapter 2. Real Meat. Okay, I said. Now what? He pointed. That. My sandwich? You gonna eat a peanut butter and jelly all your life? Why not, I said. I like it. I took another bite. He sneered. Yeah, right. I could see it now. You're in this big fancy restaurant with all these fancy big shot business people and everybody orders their dinners and the waitress comes to you and you go, duh, I'll have the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, please. Right, Morton. They're really going to be impressed. So what am I supposed to be eating? He laid his sandwich on the table. He opened it up. Bologna? Meat, Morton. Meat. I eat meat, I told him. Real meat, Morton? Ever eat a steak? I thought about it. I don't know. Maybe once. Ever eat a pork chop? A roast beef? A liver? I put my sandwich down. You're ruining my lunch. He looked proud. I ate a bite of liver last night. You're lying. I swear to God. You didn't get sick? Nope. How'd it taste? I shuddered at the thought. He made a face. Terrible. Terrible? So why'd you eat it? You're stupider than I thought. Not as stupid as wanting to be an angel baby all my life. You want to grow up? You got to eat stuff you don't like. And I'll tell you something else. He leaned across the table, getting real serious. It's an idea of mine. The worse it tastes, the faster you grow up. Now it was my turn to laugh. Yeah, right, Peterson. All I got to do is find a dead skunk and eat it, and poof, I'll be 30 years old. He slapped a sandwich back together and took a chomp out of it. Forget it, man. You want to be a baby? Go be a baby. He went on chomping. I didn't feel like having a fight. I said, okay, maybe I'll ask my mom to make me a bologna sandwich one of these days. I don't care, he shrugged. Say, I said, where does bologna come from anyway? I was trying to picture herds of bolognese roaming around on ranches. I never got an answer. The bell rang. We packed up our lunches. We didn't even get to eat most of them. As we headed out, I wondered if anybody was looking at my lunchbox. At the door, we bumped into Mrs. Sims. She was my third grade teacher. I really liked her. She never exactly said so, but I think I was her favorite student. I hadn't seen her since school ended back in June. Suds Morton, she went. How's my big fourth grader? She held out her arms. One thing about Mrs. Sims, she gets physical. If she decides she wants to hug you, there's not much you can do about it. So I just walked into those arms and let them wrap around me. How are they treating you up there, she said. Well, the teacher's okay, I said. She backed off. She looked at me. You mean something's not okay? I felt squirmy. Well, it's not as much fun being a rat. At first, she didn't understand. Then she got a big sm smile. Now, don't be so glum. Before you know it, fourth grade will be over and you'll be a... Uh, what's fifth grade? Monkeys, I told her. Of course, monkeys. You'll be a monkey. She hugged me again. She whispered, and don't forget, you'll always be an angel to me. She laughed and sent me on my way. In the hallway, I felt a hand on top of my head. Was Mrs. Sims following me? I turned. It was Gerald Willis, who was born a rat. His lips were puckered. They were making kissy noises at me. Ooh, little sudsy, my little teacher's pet. Where's my apple? Didn't you bring me an apple today? Before I could do anything, he swiped at my lunchbox. The cover sprang open and everything fell to the floor. My half-eaten peanut butter and jelly sandwich, my pack of pretzels, my cupcake, and my apple. I scrambled after the stuff on my hands and knees. Kids' feet were everywhere. Somebody crunched my pretzels. As I reached down for the apple, a big, dirty sneaker kicked it down the hallway. Above me, Gerald Willis was howling. I was the last one back to the room. I stashed my lunchbox and sat down. A note was waiting for me from Joey. It said, swings after school. I looked over at him. I nodded.